Hi guys, uh, this is me, Abhijit. So at the end of today's workshop, I actually wanted to explain more about Tailwind CSS, right? So here I am in the Tailwind Play over here, the playground. You can navigate to this site over here. And so yeah, I've just added our basic HTML skeleton that we had made earlier. And there's almost no classes or class name or any ID over here. Yeah, there are some IDs which I have to erase. But yeah, mostly there's nothing. This is our bare bones. Uh, skeleton that we had. Alright, now, and if you are wondering where I'm getting these images from, because there's no file directory over here, there's no file structure, so I'm getting these uh, images from uh, the workshop repository that we have. I have uploaded, I've created an issue over there in GitHub, and in that issue I have uploaded these files, and I'm simply pulling in these files from there. So, here, as you can see, I've just added our HTMLs, uh, whatever was inside the body tag, body part, whatever was inside the body tag, I've just added it here, just copy pasted it, okay. Now, you see, if we go to Tailwind CSS's website, let me just show you directly what it is. It's a CSS framework that has predefined classes, okay. Predefined classes like flex, padding, top four, you know, PT, if you want to center the text you just write text center if you want to rotate the text you just write rotate 90 mm, that's it right you know if you mm, let's say you want to set the width there's predefined classes for width over here if you want some colors there's different colors over here different shades of colors there's a lot actually I'll be showing you everything and imagine you know Tailwind CSS like Python you know imagine your plain CSS like as if you had been coding in C++ and C all these years and suddenly you discover Python and everything is so simple there's predefined functions for almost everything print printing stuff is so easy getting fetching inputs from the user is so easy similarly Tailwind makes CSS easy in simple words you can directly write your CSS inside these class this class attributes over here within the quotation marks directly over here and the best part is that on like on top of this you can also add normal plain CSS as well I'll show you how to do that I'll be showing you everything yeah you can see some examples Tailwinds. it's really nice um, uh, I'm really sorry there might be some noises and all I'm in the hostel and <laughs> you all know how noisy it is uh, so Tailwind is a mobile first framework so what it is is let me explain you what actually responsive is in CSS you see here uh, if I make my site like this if I decrease the width see this goes to mobile view right this is how the site would look in our phones now and if I go to if I stretch this a little more, this is how it would look in our tablets. If you have an iPad or something, this is how it would look. And this is how it would look on larger screens. So these are breakpoints. Now in CS, normal plain CSS, you have to set these breakpoints manually using media queries or something. Okay. And whereas in Tailwind, this thing is super easy to do. Let me show you. Yeah. Uh, yeah. There's small breakpoints, medium breakpoints, large breakpoints. Small means for phones and medium is for like tablets, large is for like desktop PCs and everything. And hover, focus, active states. You can add like, let's say you're hovering your mouse on top of something, right? See, yeah? you're hovering your mouse on top of something. See? And this thing comes and it's just this much code, literally this much. This thing, it would be lines of code in CSS. Yeah. Now, almost all, mm, most of the popular uh, frameworks, React frame, React frameworks or JavaScript frameworks support Tailwind CSS, and even I think Tailwind CSS is supported by React Native as well. I might be wrong, but you yeah, can check it out. Tailwind CSS is super easy. It's just like, imagine Python. Imagine Python versus C plus plus. That's Tailwind CSS. That's the difference between plain CSS and Tailwind CSS. You can even add filters and stuff. Everything is really easy. And if you ever have any doubt, 
So while you're coding, you can just go to the docs here. Docs and then see there's everything here. Daven CSS has amazing docs. It's really one of the best documentations that I've ever seen. Now if you have doubt in anything, I'll just go to the search over there. Let's say I have padding, right? I want to search about padding. Or no, forget about padding. Let's say I want to search about flexbox. I want to know more about flexbox. Flex. See here. You have all the properties listed here, all the utility classes, and their corresponding CSS. What would have happened in CSS? And see, you have explained uh, everything is explained with examples so well here. You can even control the responsiveness right here. It's really nice. So if you ever want to know more about anything, then you can just type in here in the docs. So without any further ado, let me just show what we are going to do. So this is our bare bones skeleton of what we designed earlier. I'm getting these files from that GitHub repo. And yeah, let's just get started. So let me show you with the navigation bar. Right. So I want to make this flex. OK, the navigation bar. What will I do? I'll just type flex. Done. Finished. That's it. Now, uh, what I want to do is I want the width. I want to set the width, right? Uh, before that, just to see, let us set our... I want to set the background of this navigation container, navigation bar, to some color. I just type in BG, BG for background, BG, and then, uh, see, I can choose any color I want. Okay. Let's say I want to choose a uh, line. There's different shades. So nice. Mm -hmm. Let's say I choose this one. In, okay, this one's fine. Now I choose this, right? And then, uh, let's say uh, what we had done is we had done the space between thing, right? Justify. So for that, I'll just type in justify between. Simple. That's it. The space between here. And if I hover here, I can see the actual CSS properties here. Simply hover. And you can see what the actual CSS properties are. Simply hover here. That's it. So this is done. You can see how fast it is, right? Let's say I want to... What do I want to do? Okay. I want to make this in one line. So that unordered list... I just type class here and then I just type flex. And I want some space between them. I want space between each of the list items, each of the children here. Now uh, I'll just type in what space space x space x axis. You can see how the space is increasing. Now let's just say I'll do it this much. Okay. Five. Alright. Uh, let's say I want to add some padding. So to add some padding, what will I do is, I'll just type P and hyphen, and this will put padding on all sides. Simple. Extremely simple. Let's say I add a padding of 5. 5 is fine. Right? Five. Or let's say I just want padding on the bottom. What would I do? PB. Padding, bottom, PB. That's it. And I have 5... Uh, Five, what five represents here is that, you know, these are predefined classes, right? So you can see here, five is actually 1.25 rem. You can even add your own custom values. I'll show you, show you later how we add them. Anyway, for now, let's just add padding on all sides. P, uh, how much was it? I think it was five, okay, five. Now, uh, I want to make this portfolio written thing. That's one. I want to make this a little better. How do I make this a little better? Let's say I want to change the font weight. Like I want to make it a little more bolder or something. Look here. There's base, light, medium, semi-bold, bold, extra bold. Uh, I think bold looks fine over here, right? Or maybe extra bold, yeah, extra bold is good. And for the list items, let's say I want, uh, what do I do? Um, Let's make this font mm, medium. Medium is fine. See, that's it. That's it. That's literally it. And now here, our navbar is done. 
See, it's that simple. And you know, even if I don't have this a tag over here, uh, before earlier I forgot to explain you the a tag. A tag is see here, a tag contains uh, an href attribute, a reference, a link. This is an anchor tag. Okay, an anchor tag is provides lets us uh, you know provide a link there, and you just click it, and this will head somewhere. Okay, like this. right now it's not heading anywhere, but yeah. Now if I remove this part, this just what I'll do is I'll change all the comments and just delete this. And I'll delete this as well. Here, here, I press Alt. And I'll delete this. That's it. I delete this. And these are my normal list items. And let's see. Uh, okay, I'll explain that later. For now, let's just make the basic design of our web page, right? Uh, Okay, our navigation bar is done. Now oh, inside the main, yeah, inside the main we have this div. Uh, so here, directly in this div, I'll just write, what do I write? There's two containers inside this. One is for the image and one is for the text, right? So I want them side by side. So what will I do? Flex, okay. I want them in a flex box. And I want some space between them. So what will I do? Space X, simple. Space uh, around 10 or what? Okay, see, it's that simple. Now let's see. I want these uh, this text here in the center. I want that that in the center. What will I do? I'll just go target that div here, this div, and I'll type. Uh, what do I do? Mm, first, I'll type flex. I'll make this a flex box, and I'll make it flex column. Simple flex call column. That's it. flex direction column. Simple. Now this is flexed as column horizontal no, vertically. Sorry, vertical. And what do I do? I want it in the center, right? What will I type? Items center. I think this should be okay. That was not. Uh, it should be here. I think. Yeah, I should have typed it here. Item center. See, mm, I wanted to explain you about item center and the difference between item center and justify center. Justify and items, right? Items is for vertically aligning the element in a flex box, and justify is for horizontally aligning the element. So we did that. I don't need to apply flex over here, so I'll just leave this. But then I want to uh, edit the text a little bit. Let's say I want the text to become a little bigger. See here, there's all kinds of classes here. Large, XL, 2XL, some 3XL, 4XL, 5XL, 6XL, and so on. It just keeps going. And there's other properties as well. I can inherit the size from the parent. Now, let's say I wanted some custom value, right? Let's see, I don't like this. Let's say I don't like this. I wanted some custom value. After the hyphen, what will I press? I'll press the second bracket thing here, the square brackets. Within the square brackets, I'll specify my custom value. Let's say I want it to be 40 pixels. See there, 40 pixels works. I want it to be 8 rem. That's too huge, okay. Uh, 8, 3 rem. That's huge as well. Uh, 2 rem. Yeah, or actually, forget about that I'll just target each of the classes here I want it to be um, text how much okay this one to be 3 rem no oh, sorry inside this one, 3 rem yeah and this one I think that's fine what it is and I want that text to be bold Bond. and I want this span text to be on um, let's say medium. medium and maybe I want to change the color of that font a little bit what do I do I just type text which color do I want maybe I want gray okay See. simple I've got my gray yeah that's it really simple there's all sorts of tricks you can do with uh, Tailwind CSS. It's amazing. Mm. 
Now what I want is, I want this image to be, this 400px thing is not working, where is it? Okay, it is. Okay. Since I've wrapped it in a container, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to control my image from this container. Maybe I want this to be rounded. I hope this works. Okay. Rounded. Okay, it's not working. There's a reason. That's because I have to target this image class itself. Image itself. Rounded. Or rounded what? Rounded medium. Rounded. What? See, it's working. 3XL. Maybe full. Uh, I think 3XL is fine. And this thing. The image div. I want to reduce its size. Okay. Or maybe I want to add some padding. The I'll simply be adding some padding here. Okay, that's a lot. Actually. What I'll do is I'll decrease the width first. I'll do this. And let's say I want this in the center. What I'm going to do is I'm going to justify. Great. And I want the main tag to have some margin. I'll add margin top empty. Well, then let's say, and you see, we have our margin. That's it. And then inside this, um, actually, wait, this is our main section, right? I should have added it in this div because this is our image and the text div. Okay. I don't want to target the entire thing, right? I just want this stuff. Okay. See? Here yeah, we've got it. And we, remember we added some shadow in the image, right? Shadow behind the image. What I'm going to do is, I'm just going to add a shadow. What do I type for shadow? Simple shadow. That's it. Boom. Shadow. This is my box shadow. Container shadow. Actually, that's not the proper way because uh, it's applying shadow in the div. I want it in the image. So I'll apply it in the image class of shadow. Shadow. See that? We have our shadow. Black. So we can have it with any color. Let's add this much. This is fine. Okay. Now, what we are going to do is, uh, this section is done. So, about the About Me section, here, oh no, this is not the About Me, about here, this works, and actually, instead of flex, I can just write MX Auto, I think that will center, okay, I need the width full for that, flex, just to center, what's happening, and I want the gap between the article, section right I want a margin of around 10. 20 20 okay no 20 is too much no. 16 63 and I want this font to become text for Excel here I have my about me and then I want some margins here right between the sides, I want some margin there. So what I'm going to do is this entire article portion because I want the margins in the entire article portion. Right? So I'm just going to type margin x for the horizontal axis margins. Margin x. Let's say I have ten. Great. Ten. I have margin of ten here in the entire article portion. So that is done. Uh, you know mm, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna give our p tag actually in this section i'm gonna put some space between the elements all the child elements space y around this much is fine space between the paragraph and the header in the and the heading okay okay so now i'm going to all right so if we jump on to our next section what we have here is our skills section right 
Oh, or before that, let's add some classes to our paragraph. Uh, what can we do? Make the paragraph text a little better, I guess. Text. Uh, let's say I want the text to justify. Justify or left align left or center, or I want it to be aligned at the end. You can do all kinds of stuff with it. Or let's say I want to increase the size. So I keep it base, or you know, let's just keep it large. And no, um, let's just keep it normal because I want to show you something the line height. Yeah, see. You can even adjust the line height of it. This looks pretty clean, I think. Yeah, this one. And let's say I want the font to be normal. Let's just put it normal. Pretty fine. And let's say I want to change the font style. So, what will that? There's some predefined fonts here, but you can add your own fonts as well in Tailwind. Uh, let's say I want serif. Yeah, great. It looks pretty bad, but let's just remove that. <laughs> okay, let's jump on to the next section. So in this section, hmm, okay, one mistake that I did here was add margin to the section itself. Here. So what's happening is when I do that, I, let's say I choose a background of this entire section. See, it's starting from there. Instead of that, yeah, actually, it's fine. It's fine. Okay. I could have applied that margin top to the H1 itself, but this is fine as well. It's fine. It depends on your personal choice. And this one, my skills. For my skills, I'll apply the same margin top 10. Was it 10? Or was it 16? I think 10 is fine. Yeah. And for the H1, I'll apply the same thing. You see, here, what I'm doing is I'm repeating the same class. I'm having to repeat the same classes again and again, right? This thing. I have to type in the same shit again. Now, what I'll do is I'll just simply cut this and I'll go to my CSS here, my CSS file. This will be your main CSS file there. Uh, don't worry about this shit. Now. So these are our three layers. Okay, these are called directives, tailwind directives. Uh, this is your base, base layer, your components layer, and your utilities layer. Now these are my utilities. So I'm just gonna type in layer here, layer, utilities. I'll open the braces, and I will. What what is the what's that called? Okay, I need to give it a custom class name. Because I'm preparing a custom class name for the H1 class, right? Custom H1. Let's just type custom H1. Here also, I have an H1 here as well. So I'll write custom H1. Great. And where else do I have another? I think it's in contact here. Yeah. Contact. Uh, let's just delete this, this ID thing. We don't need it. Custom H1. Oh, not this one. Custom h1 okay we have our custom h1 so now we'll go to our css file here i'll use the selector the class selector custom h1 and i'll simply apply our tailwind the utilities i'll uh, press apply add the red apply and i'll just paste in our or what i had written over there and i'll use a semicolon to end it see now I've gotten it in all of them. Simple. Let's say I want the font to be font to be semi bold. Great. Now I have semi bold. Fine. Or actually, I'll just set it to medium. Medium. All right. Now. Let us jump into our uh, skills section. You know, for skills, we had to go, you know what we had to do? We had to set up the class name for each one of these. We had to type it individually. No, here we don't have to do that. What will I do? I'll just type. Print. 
simple boom we have a grid grid layout and how many columns do i want how many columns grid calls how many two three four five six seven eight nine uh, I think three looks fine for this three here okay so I want this this thing on the center right so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to type in please items I'm just going to see which one is working so, yeah if I want it at the start it was at the start if I want it at the end here if I want it at the center then center that's it and here just like the other class, I'm going to add much longer uh, space. Space Y axis. I want here. How much did I add in the first one? I think it was five. The first one, six. Okay. Let's just add six. Let's not put different values. It's in bad UI UX practice. Um, okay. And with each element, I each cell here, each cell. I want there to be a gap. Oh, sorry, sorry. To be in grid. Yeah, in the grid. Yeah, I want there to be a gap of uh, eight eight pixels. It's it's fine. It looks good. And then we are done with this. Great. That's it. All right, so let's jump on to our next section. Uh, here in our next section, it's the contact me section over here. So I'm just going to add the margin again. So you can see here, I could have added a custom class over here now. Like, you can do this yourself. I just don't want to add it right now. Uh, here, I think it's 16. No, it's 10. I added 10. Okay. 10 and then space Y. Axis, horizontal axis, space. Yeah. Space of y was I think six, right? Okay. So this entire thing, I'll add the form in a flex box, and I'll make it flex columns. Great. Mm -hmm. And then what I'm going to do is, is there? Where is the Field. Okay, it's here. Um, and each of them have space between y. There's some space y. Okay, I added some two two space. So yeah, of zero point five room. You can see what space y is, uh, y is actually doing. It's adding margin top and margin bottom at the same time. Now, in the input, you see here, I can't even see my input. None. Uh, I'll add a custom class here, I think. Wait. Wait. Why is there a class here? Um, class. Uh, let's say input field. Yeah. Add this custom class, right? Uh, I'll add it to every other class in input fields that I have. Input field, and again, oh, I just have two two inputs. Even for the text area, I'll just make it the same class. Input field. No, wait, wait. Okay, I'll show you one. Now, input field. Yeah. Okay, I can do this. Now I'll go make my custom class here in the utilities here. I'll, I'll add another one. I'm using the selector. Input field here. And then I apply till in here. What will I do? First, I want to see the input. I can't even see it now. Uh, what will I do here? I'll add an outline outline um, color black black and outline of one two one uh, 
Okay, I don't know why or not this isn't increasing. How about I add a border? Border. Border. Black. Oh, okay. So it's border. It's not outline. And I want this border size to increase. So border, maybe I want it to. Okay. And I want it rounded. Rounded. Come on, work. Oh, wait. Was it border rounded? No. Rounded. Okay. It is rounded. And when I click this, yeah, it's fine. Uh, let's not make it black. Make it, let's say I wanted red somewhere. Okay, red, great. Uh, this looks horrible, but yeah, okay. It's red. And I want the width to be. Okay, I won't specify the width here because I'm applying this to the text area as well, right? So, what I can do is, if, after adding this custom class here, see, I can add more classes here. This space for more, a lot more. Uh, I can just add the, not the width. Okay, yeah, I can add the width. I can add the width to be 50% of my parent width. Great. Width. 50% that's it I know it looks a little weird but yeah <laughs> for that I think I can add justify center here right <laughs> to fix this I think so okay that's not working oh it's flex columns now flex columns that's why it's not working but then if I add MX to Oh, it's pushing the entire thing. Item center. So yeah, item center is what works. See, this is how you have to try out stuff. Just mm, try out what's working. And then, uh, here in the text area, the text area is fine. I want the height for this. I'll just type it out at the same time. Yeah, I'll press Alt, Alt, and then select. Uh, I want the height to be, which I can see it properly. Yeah, this is fine. I can enter my name here. Actually, I want some padding as well. Because I don't want the text to be in on the edges like this. Some padding. Does this work? Okay, let's see. Yeah, it's working. Okay. Great. Mm, what I'm going to do is now, this is also done. I can do it with span as well, I think. Span. And what I'm going to do is button. Right, so what I'm going to do is plus and the background. Let's make this background. Oh, what do I make? What do I make? Let's make it red. Okay. I have a red background. Great. <laughs> and I want some padding to be there oh, from all sides. Oh my god, that's right. This, this thing. I want it rounded. A little rounded is fine, I guess. That's too much. Okay. And I want the text to be white. Okay. Great. Fine. All well and good. And yeah, that's a that's a no. Just our footer is left, I think. Okay, footer. 
what we're going to do to this is we're going to make it absolute we're going to give it flex and absolute position this is the absolute position okay here position absolute flex and then what we're going to do is flex uh, I want it on the center come on please work why is it not working? oh because of the width okay okay see it is because of the width that it's not working because of the width no? now what I'm going to do is I'm going to color the footer see since our navigation bar is green so I'll, maybe I'll make this green as well it's actually a <laughs> bad really bad idea okay boom it's green <laughs> four four hundred is fine right come on yeah okay now what is the footer text text let's say I want it small very small no that's extra small base and then I want some padding padding on top and button, bottom so padding y y axis okay padding y two two is fine no that's too much I got one okay one and then uh, I want some margin here for the article for the article no, I think I'm making a mistake here. This footer should actually be below the main. It should not be inside the main. This is our main, right? It doesn't make sense for it to be in the main. Now, this main portion will have uh, margin M Y around six, ten, ten. Okay. Great. See, we've designed our site. Bro. Wow. Now let me show you some cool stuff. Now I'll show you the cool stuff about Tailwind. Cool stuff for the <laughs> Okay. Uh, let's say I want here when I hover on those I want let's say here on this list item when I hover on it I want the cursor to become weight so look at this <laughs> it works and or let's just say I want it to become cursor pointer see it's a pointer symbol let's say I want on hover I want the cursor to become move look at this the move symbol appears <laughs> it's so easy here hover go hover cursor help what's help oh question mark okay <laughs> yeah and um, let's do one thing maybe I want remember I told you about breakpoints and stuff responsive I want this to be hidden in normal I want this to be hidden and in small screen sorry and in medium screens and above MD colon I want this to flex okay to be flex the display display hidden none and display flex if I make this medium here, see it appears now in medium screens. When it's small, it doesn't appear. Nice, huh? You see, when this is small, it's, uh, small uh, you see it's becoming really packed over here. So, what I want to do is here, um, where is it? It's in our this div, right? This div is enclosing everything. Yeah, this div. I want 
um, only the medium ones to flex when it's on medium and when it's on small flex row okay when it's on medium i want it to flex row and when it's on small i want it to be flex column and on small screens I want this to justify the center flex columns and X auto. Okay, isn't working. How do I center this? Item center is already there. I want the gap here. You see. Okay, that's not working. Medium flex. What if I just say flex? Okay. Medium flex. Medium flex row. Let's specify that. I think it should work here. Yeah. Oh, so I had to specify flex and flex row as well. So I can just remove this medium from flex. Oh, okay, okay. Oh, yeah. So that's why it was not working. See, it's working. Because I wasn't applying the mm, default flex property here before, like, I was applying flex columns directly here. Obviously, flex columns works directly as well. But yeah, with flex, I was able to use justify center here. So the reason why this was not working is because uh, this flex one, this flex, I was applying it only on medium screens. Now directly it was become flex co columns over here, flex direction. I was applying flex direction without even applying the flex property. So first I need to apply flex. See here, this looks great. Now for this part, the margins here, this text, you see, what I'm going to do is, this thing right font normal this leading thing I'm just gonna write it for medium screens and good and for small screen I'm gonna justify text now this is really hard to read I don't think I should do that okay this is done and when this is done see look at this this is really small now it's not even and it's scrolling on the sides see we don't want that to happen we don't want our site to scroll on the side like that because of an element so what we are going to do is we are going to fix that and how are we going to fix that how are we going to fix that this is working 50 percent of people so what I'm going to do is I'm going to specify the, this for medium screens, right? Medium screens and for small screens, normal, normal classes. What I'm going to do is it will be 70%, 70%. No, I want 80, 80%. Okay. And this thing, wow, what's what's happening to this thing? I think it's because of this co columns over here, right? This thing. What if I remove this? What will happen if I remove this? Ah, yeah, let's just remove that. I think that because I had specified the column value and all, no. That's why it had, you know, it was that its value was fixed. Oh, this one as well. I'm going to specify. A certain value for this large how much is it 70 percent mm. large medium actually mm. sorry 50 percent 50 percent of the screen Oh, I did. I forgot to specify the property. Yeah. 
okay that's fine and then put up one rest to the I'm going to apply the same width over there that I've done here 80% was it 80% yeah great see in different breakpoints it's acting differently nice now and let's see let me show you something really cool yeah uh, in our nav bar, when I hover, I want the color to change to amber, BG. Amber. Yeah. See, there's a lot of color presets. Let me show you what colors are there real quick. Look at yeah, how many colors are there. You can even add your custom colors. I'll show you how to add your custom colors. You can add your RGB values as well. You know, custom colors, if I add it like this, hash. Uh, if I add the color coding. This is for black, and then I can choose my own color here. Let's say I want some, I want this color when I hover. See, I hover and it's turning into that color. But then, see, it's turning into that color really fast, right? I don't want that. I want the transition to be for colors and I want the duration of that transition 700. Look at this. Nice and smooth. What 700 here is, if you hover here, it's actually 700 milliseconds. I can specify my own custom value here as well 0 0.8 seconds. 0 0.8 seconds. I want two seconds. One, two, yeah. One, two. You see? Really nice. I can do a lot of other stuff in Jalen here. Okay, see, this thing. This thing. In small screens, it's wrapping like this, right? I want this to flex. Wrap. Um, right. and what I want is I want the text to be center. It should be in the center. Text center. Okay. Simple. Text center. <laughs> yeah. You see? Really nice. This is the power of Tailwind. Everything here, right in our HTML file, we have it. And let's see, oh, we forgot one thing. Let's say we want to add our background, right? Let me show you something really cool. Now, uh, I'll go to my base layer. Base layer is all our uh, HTML, body, content. Okay, that is our base layer. Layer, base, here. I will run to this. Uh, let's say I want to apply a gradient. You know what I'll do? I'll just simply type in gradient to bottom right, let's see, from yellow 400 to actually via blue, no, no, cyan, cyan to yellow back again, yellow 400. Look at this. Uh, come on, come on, come on. Oh, sorry, 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 sorry. I I did not specify the selector. Like, inside what I'd be applying this, I did not specify that only now. Okay. Now I think this should work. Hopefully. Please work. Okay. See, it's working. Great. <laughs> we have a nice little gradient here. This is gradient to bottom right. See this, what would be the actual CSS properties for this background image, linear gradient to bottom right. And you know, you might be thinking whether you'll be able to apply normal CSS properties or not. Yes, you will. Uh, let's put a background image. URL, I think, here. 
here I'll just simply type it in within these quotation marks that's it and I'll apply the background size to cover boom we have our picture in the background this entire thing but I think the normal gradient looks nice <laughs> yeah I like this there, there you go we have our portfolio site if I go to the responsive view look at this for medium screens large screens medium screens yeah. so simple everything within our HTML file everything literally everything uh, that's it I I hope you learned something learn something from this and yeah you can continue on with your journey with doing CSS and HTML and thanks for watching guys <laughs> okay I feel like a youtuber bro